So yeah. to piggyback off actually the last two topics, let's say, f- we'll just use the bridge example. You have architects, engineers. Like what is the hierarchy of responsibility? Um, like if there is an the, issue, the, who like do they the go to? The core structure is always owner at the top and then architect and contractor. So from, from our side, the architect side, it's kind of what we call the build side and the design side. Okay. So design side always happens first. Um, obviously it doesn't get designed before it gets built. Mm. Um, design side is architects sort of at the top of the triangle. Then you have our consultants and engineers. So engineers are usually things like structural engineer, like you were saying, electrical, uh, mechanical, civil, um, even things like geotechnical. So because, you know, in some, especially in California, which is super seismically active Mm. area. Um, so there's a lot of sort of pieces of the code that require the involvement of some of those people because they have that specialized training to be able to um, read the charts and to be able to do soil borings, which are basically to take this giant uh, cylinder, hollow cylinder, and shove it down into the earth Mm. and just pull out layers and layers of earth. Mm. In some cases, you know, 15, 20, 30 feet deep. Um, So they're seeing everything that's happening below the soil. Because in some cases, like in New Orleans where I used to live, you don't hit... um, refusal is what it's called like hard rock bedrock until yeah. 50 feet down mm. here it could be five feet mm. right it just depends on where you are in the country which is why it's so important to know like mm. how um the consistency of of the earth changes in different places um but anyway yeah those teams can get really really big depending on how complex they are and depending on how um strict the requirements are because mm. some places might have you know, three times as many requirements, especially if you do government work, they get really, really strict about who you have as part of your team because they want, you know, they want to cover their ass. They want to make yeah, sure totally like, everything has to be up to code. Right. So if you do private work, it's a little bit more sort of loose. People, you can say like, I know our, you know, structural guys can handle that. We don't need to hire somebody mm-hmm. else to do it because then you're on our side, like your fees get smaller because yeah. you're sort of dividing mm-hmm. up that pie into smaller and smaller pieces. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, we kind of maintain design control on the design side. And then there's a general contracting side, which is who builds whatever we design. Um, and then they have their whole team on yeah. their side. So that's kind of the split between the two of them. But on the design side, we're all roads lead back to the architect. Um, and consequently, all fingers point <laughs> to us when something goes mm-hmm. wrong. So because they were, we're like the like the conductor of the orchestra. Mm. Like we don't need to know how to play all the instruments, but we need to know what they sound like. That makes sense. Um, and to, to be able to run those things sort of like sequencing things like this should happen after this. It's like, I need to know where the beginning and the end of your scope is so I can sit you next to the person who's responsible for what happens next. Totally. Um, so yeah, it's just a lot of like organization and sequencing and like, and also I'm sure there are seating changes. Like, you know, if somebody's doing really well, they're going to be moved up from second seat to first seat. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so yeah, like some people just move faster than you expect Hmm. or vice versa. Like somebody could drag the project and then you have to find somebody else to either replace them Mm -hmm. or yeah, like supplant them with another team or add more support for that one team Mm -hmm. because they're not doing so hot. 